Good morning, this is Wayne Bilal with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. Today we're going to talk about critical mistake number three. It's just simple. Not knowing your product cost. Look, at the end of the day, we're all selling something and everything we sell, either a service or a product, has a cost. All kinds of cost. I mean, you know, opportunity cost is one that we never talk about. We know all the obvious ones. You buy the product, you pay your employees. You know, that kind of stuff. But an opportunity cost, too, is what you don't do when you are doing what you're doing. Um, but let's talk about the basic. Well, let's, let's expand on that because that really wasn't where I was going to go with this. Um, opportunity cost. i give you an example. A couple of years ago, I decided to get rid of bookkeeping. All right. Last year, 2019, we got rid of all our payroll returns. Now, I didn't leave my client high and dry. We referred them to somebody that I you know does a very good job and probably does a better job than us because that's what she does, okay? Um, if you need somebody, call me. I got somebody good for you. Anyways, um, income went down first year. Sales dropped by $40,000. Bottom line, remember, we're not in business to do sales. We're in business to make a profit. Bottom line went up by 80. Why? Well, opportunity costs. While I was working on lower cost bookkeeping clients and putting out those fires and making sure the work was being done and having twice the staff and having to hire, manage, supervise, take care of all that garbage, I wasn't able to take care of this, the clients that needed the higher level products, the higher level services. So, you know, basically, I wasn't able to help them make more money and I wasn't help, able to help as many people cut their taxes. So those are things people are willing to pay me for. Okay, so while I'm doing lower case stuff, I'm not doing the other, which is an opportunity cost. Another example, I had a gentleman who had a pretty good consulting firm, um, kept about 10 of his clients and sold the rest to his employees. Um, he made as much profit from those 10 top clients as he did from his couple thousand clients because they now we could give them full time, full service. They paid him, of course, because he really helped them. Um, but let's also talk about product cost, okay? It's amazing to me, all business owners know that not all their products are created equally. There are some products that make a ton of money on products. When I say products, I'm using that interchangeably, products and services, okay? And others they barely break even on like my book evening, okay? It's amazing how many business owners don't really know what products they make the most money on. They focus on the products they make very little profit on or or ignore those that, and, and ignore those that they make some real cash on, all right? They're cash cows, let's call them. Even worse, I've seen business owners who have unintentionally put their a product on sale below their cost and then spend advertising dollars to sell more at a loss. <laughs> Why? Well, it's simple. They don't know their true cost. Okay, starting point, if you don't know how to do this stuff, get with a CPA, get with somebody that knows what they're doing so you can walk through it and make sure you don't forget some cost, okay? But it's really pretty easy. You take your sales, less your purchase price of the product, less, less cost of direct labor for each product. If you do a lot, you use something called standard labor cost. Again, get with a CPA so they can help you with that. Cost of any outsource work, cost of other direct costs related to preparing the product for delivery or sale, and this equals your gross product from the profit from the product. <clears throat> now, can that be a little bit tricky? Yeah. I had a Mexican food restaurant, a couple of young men were gonna buy it, and uh, I was doing some basic coaching with them, something simple, all right, to get them going, some advertising, some marketing. But one of the things we got into is product costs. And I went through the formula, set up a spreadsheet for them, told them to do everything on their menu, and they looked at me like I had grown a third eye. You know, they're like, no, I mean, we got 600 plus items. I said, okay, fine, let's use the Pareto principle, the 80 20 rule. Let's just do the 20% that represent most of your sales. Take the top 10, 20, 60, no more than, you know, 60. We actually were doing 90 10. And they said, okay, yeah, we can do that. And a couple weeks later, they came back for our next meeting and they had done every single product on the menu. And I'm like, but you said that was too much work. And they, they told me, and they said, straight out, it's, we were wrong. I mean, as we started working on this, we realized even though we grew up in the business and our family was there, that, that we weren't able to, that we were wrong, that we, what, our, what we thought wasn't necessarily correct. And that we were not pushing the items that actually were making us a lot of money and pushing items that weren't. 
So they redesigned their menu, featured things that had a higher profit, we did some other things, created other menus that push those items, uh, upsold, things we talk about and I'll talk about more. But the critical mistake here was not knowing their cost and when they were able to know their cost, their profits really took off. Same with mine, same with yours. Do the work, get help, this, this is an accounting exercise, so get an accountant to help you. It doesn't have to be a CPA, but it'd probably be best if it was. Pay a little bit for it, <clears throat> be well worth it in the long run. Hey, until next time, this is Wayne Blouse saying let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.